Hello, fabulous entrepreneur. It's Tash Corbin here, and welcome to another episode of the Heart Centered Business Podcast. This is episode number 255, which means you can find all the relevant links and the show notes for today's episode over at tashcorbin.com forward slash 255. In today's episode, I'm going to help you build your email list from scratch. This is a very consistent question that I get asked about in the online space. So I wanted to break it down into a step-by-step process. Whether you've got no mailing list whatsoever, or you've been trying to build it for a while, but it just doesn't seem to be getting any momentum, this is going to be a really helpful episode for you. So let's dive on in. I'm Tash Corbin, and this is the Heart Centered Business Podcast. Okay, so we know that having a mailing list is a very critical element of growing an online business. Number one, it's the asset that you own in terms of audience. You could lose your Facebook audience in the blink of an eye. Your platform that you love building your audience on may disappear. But when you have a mailing list, that mailing list is actually an asset that you have in your business. So you want to make sure that that forms a core part of your online business strategy. I love having a mailing list and I love sending emails out to my mailing list consistently because it's such a high connection uh, opportunity to have a conversation, dive into someone's inbox and give them some really juicy value consistently. It's the main way that I distribute this podcast every single week. And I love getting replies to my emails and I encourage my mailing list to reply to me. Because of the high level of engagement and the high level of connection that I have with my mailing list, it is still my number one core foundation of any launch or promotion strategy. So having a mailing list and particularly having a mailing list that grows over time and that you are consistently nurturing is going to be a really powerful part of any online business strategy. So if it's something that you do want to be focusing on in 2021, what do you need to do in order to build that email list, especially if you're starting from scratch? Well, part one, you need to have a platform. You need a way to collect people's email addresses and email them that is compliant with a lot of legal regulations. So every country has its own spam or privacy laws that you need to be compliant with when it comes to emailing people and collecting their email address. It's considered personal and private data. For that reason, I suggest and recommend that you use a CRM or customer relationship management system or some kind of email platform that automatically meets those requirements and standards. If you have been looking at all of the different options of uh, platforms such as MailChimp or MailerLite or uh, ActiveCampaign or Kartra or ConvertKit or Aweber or Infusionsoft or Simplero or I can't think of any more, Kajabi. If you're thinking about which one to use and you're looking at them all and you have no idea where to start, my number one recommendation is start with MailerLite and I'll make sure I pop a link to that. I'm not an affiliate or anything, but we'll make sure we pop a link to that in the show notes. The reason why I recommend MailerLite is that it has a great balance of user friendliness and functionality, and it especially is helpful for people who are just starting out. Most of the functions on the advanced platforms are not something that you're going to be using, particularly uh, in the first few months of growing your mailing list. And it is very simple to move from MailerLite to some of the other platforms once you're ready. So if you've been going round and round in circles and not growing your list because you haven't decided on a platform yet, Arnie Tash has just made the decision for you. Go and check out MailerLite and sign yourself up. Now, that's number one. You need a way to collect people's email addresses and then you need a way to be able to send them emails. Now, the second thing that you need is you need a reason for them to give you their email address. So it could be as simple as they want to sign up for regular updates from you 
Or you can use something like an opt-in or a freebie or a discount code, some kind of incentive for people to jump onto your mailing list as well. Now, I am all for transparency and consent in marketing. And for me, it's very important when people opt in for a free resource from you or a discount or something that it is clear to them that they are subscribing to your mailing list at that point in time. Every single one of my opt-ins says in the opt-in itself that you will also be added to my mailing list when you sign up to this opt-in. So you are signing up to my mailing list and you will receive that opt-in. And in the first email and every email from there, people have an automated way to unsubscribe from that mailing list should they choose. So when you are um, giving people an incentive or a reason to sign up to your mailing list, make sure that it's very clear that they are in fact signing up to your mailing list. In some countries, for example, in the EU, because of GDPR, people also need to tick a box and give you that taking a affirmative action that they are happy to receive emails on your mailing list. Now, some of the more advanced platforms, you can split it between countries and all sorts of things, but all of the platforms generally have a GDPR compliant way for you to be able to uh, invite people onto your mailing list. And I would suggest you use it. So you want to give people a reason to subscribe to your mailing list. Now, the third thing that you're going to need is a promotion strategy. Once you've decided what reason you're giving people to subscribe to your mailing list, then you need a strategy to go out and promote that reason to your audience, both warm and cold. So that promotion strategy could be that you create content. So you might do a podcast like this and have your opt-in as something that you promote on that content. You might post about your free thing on social media or your newsletter list. You could have a pop-up on your website when people visit your website. If you've got high website traffic that says, do you want to jump onto my mailing list and sign up for updates? Or would you like my free training on something? You can do joint ventures where you are on someone else's podcast or you uh, promote uh, the freebies of someone else and they promote your freebies as well. And you can also um, use good old fashioned SEO strategies being on things like Pinterest, using keyword optimization, all sorts of different ways that you can get that free thing in front of people. Now, don't forget there are both organic and paid ways that you can promote anything in your business and your opt-in or freebie is exactly the same. It's no exception. So once you've got your promotion strategy working organically, I recommend scaling it using paid advertising, but you want to make sure that the opt-in is doing its job first. Now, this is where the whole big But wait comes in from me because your list growth isn't just for list's sake. We're not growing a mailing list just to be able to say, I have a thousand people on my mailing list. The whole point of growing your mailing list is to grow your business. So we want to make sure that the growth of your mailing list results in sales. We want to make sure that the growth of your mailing list is with the right people And if we get people onto your mailing list, you want to make sure that you nurture that audience. I always say that having a mailing list and not consistently contacting them is similar to saying, hey, everyone, I'm hosting a party at my place and people turn up and you're not there. You don't show them around. You don't get them a drink. You don't make sure that they know the other people in the room. You are simply absent from that party. So you want to make sure that it's not just about growing your list, but that you are also ensuring that you're growing your list and making sales, that you are growing your list with the right people, and that once you've got those people on your list, you are nurturing that audience for the long term. So the reason why I want to bring those three things to your attention is because for me, when you are starting from scratch, one of the easiest and most effective ways to grow your email list is by running webinars. The reason why I recommend webinars is because they actually hit those three things fairly well for you all in one go. 
And there's only one extra little thing I would recommend that you do on top of that. So if you think about it, a webinar is your opportunity to attract the right people because your webinar is going to be talking about a topic that is specific to your audience and it's pitching a product at the end of it or a, or a service at the end of it. It's going to help you make sales because it also includes the um, pitch or the upsell as part of that process. And it's a nurturing process, not just for the new people who sign up to your webinar as the first time that they join your list, but also for continuing to provide value to your existing list as well. So if you were to run a webinar once a month from when you start your business, you're going to get better and better at delivering that webinar, promoting that webinar, growing your list, making sales on that webinar, ensuring that it's for the right people and it's really niched and nurturing your audience. And you're going to not just consistently grow your list for list's sake, it is one of the highest conversion opt-ins that you can choose from. That's because it's high connection. People attend live. They're listening to your voice. They're getting great value from you. And you can take them through the full process, the turn process of taking people from curious to actually converting into a paying client. The turn process that I recommend on webinars is bridging the gap between what people think they want and need and what their real needs and transformation are. And I will make sure I link to the webinars episode of the podcast if you'd like to find out more about that. So webinars as your main opt-in or freebie or incentive or reason for people to sign up to your mailing list would be my number one recommendation. And then the only other thing I want to say as a caveat with that is don't just run webinars and only email people about your webinars. Set yourself up with a consistent email strategy, whether that be once a week, once every two weeks as a minimum of where you are sending an email out to your full mailing list and providing consistent value. That value and connection and consistency will ensure that you continue to nurture your list over the longer term as well. And that, again, is going to make sure it stays full of the right people and you're maximizing the sales that you make from that list growth as well. So as you can tell, this isn't just about how to get people onto your mailing list who are random people who aren't going to buy from you and ultimately it doesn't have an impact on your business. If we're going to grow an email list, we want to grow it with the right people. You want to make sure that you're nurturing those people effectively and it actually maximizes the sales that you're going to make from that activity as part of your business strategy. Hopefully you found this episode of the podcast particularly helpful. If you've got any questions or want to continue the conversation, don't forget to come on over to the Heart Centered Soul Driven Entrepreneurs Facebook group. Use hashtag podcast aha. Uh-huh. Let me know you've been listening to episode number 255 and let's keep chatting about your list growth. And if you would like a beautiful and juicy resource uh, that's going to support you in growing that mailing list, I'd love for you to come and check out my $0 Facebook marketing strategy. In this, I talk about that promotion strategy part of your list growth strategy. So you've got your platform, the reason for people to jump in, webinars. I'll make sure I link to the webinars episode of the podcast for you. And then you want to have a promotion strategy. If you're interested in using Facebook as that promotion strategy and you want to do it lean and without investing money in ads initially, then come on over and check out the $0 Facebook marketing plan. All of the links from today's episode are over at tashcorbin.com forward slash 255. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of the Heart Centered Business Podcast. Until next time, I cannot wait to see you shine. Would you like more tips, tools, and resources to help you grow your heart-centered business? Head to tashcorbin.com today.